Fuck yes, welcome to the Heavy Host. This is Brian Dress. With me, as always, is Jonathan Hardesty. I'm here and away. Darso. Hi. And Emily Blake. I'm hungover. <laughs> I like that the other two have gotten, like, they've tried to get as little in as possible before I interrupt them, but John still tries to get more in. <laughs> I will get a novel in there, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best times, worst of times. <laughs> that would actually be pretty wonderful, and at the end of the year, Brian just cuts it all together. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty awesome. <laughs> a montage of my interruptions. The, just the longest, most panicked. And then he. <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> oh that's a great idea yeah you'll get one sentence in by the end of the year yeah <laughs> um, our special guest today is Libby Ward hi Libby hello uh, hi. do you have anything you'd like to plug right off the bat uh, yes you can find me all over the internet at Sneaky Varmint if you google Sneaky Varmint you'll find Libby Ward's Twitter <laughs> Instagram website Facebook all the things would you find any Sneaky Varmints yeah Okay. Of course, but, but you gotta go to find so out. You'll find yeah. half Libby Ward, half Sneaky Varmint. I enjoy following you on Instagram. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, there's it's uh, the uh, adventures of a giddy writer and magician, musician, and gadabout. That's me. Gadabout. What is, what is it? <laughs> a gadabout is a habitual pleasure seeker. So, uh, oh, wow. as evidenced by my appearance on this podcast this morning, after accepting a spontaneous invitation yeah. last night. I say yes to nearly everything, <laughs> with very few exceptions. Oh, and, that's uh, pretty awesome. So I get into all kinds of adventures. Yeah. That's pretty that awesome. fun. Yeah. Not as yes I probably yeah, should. Yeah, I'm definitely that. <laughs> but, I yeah. mean, it does take up a lot of your time and energy yeah. Yeah. to say yes to everything, which is okay. I have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had two other people that we had asked this week who both, for various reasons, said no, and Libby was kind enough at the very last minute to go, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So it's going to be great. Thank uh, you. But yeah, before yeah. we get into uh, today's battle, we should do a Where Have You Been Doing? I will go first. I read the most underwhelming comic book of the week, uh, which was Marvel Legacy. Everyone had been like promoting this. like It's the biggest and coolest thing that's going to happen this year in comics. But it was just... <laughs> eh. Like I, Everyone had kind of like said it was like Marvel's answer to Rebirth, and I expected Rebirth quality. And no. So you're unplugging a thing. Yeah. Don't well, read Marvel. From what I'm I... saying that you can read it. It's <laughs> it's okay. Like it's the art was really good. They have a ghostwriter sub story in there that was really awesome. Um, you can tell that somebody at Marvel wants to do Fantastic Four, but they still won't let them do it. Um, mm. Johnny even throws up the four flare, which was pretty cool. But it was just the way you described it to me, uh, with all the male characters coming back. It just sounded like. Uh, we regret um, doing all these female ones, so revamp. Back to the dudes. Well, it's not even back to the dudes. It's just the dudes are back as well. So you have Ironheart and Iron Man. You have Lady Thor and male Thor. And it's like, oh, great. So now you have, still have two Got to get that uh, representation in for the males. Yeah. 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 So it's a whole double date. Kind of, yeah. Issue. Yeah. yeah. Double dates for everyone. I guess it's just I mean it was yeah. I think it's definitely worth a read if you are interested to see what Marvel's up to right now um, it's kind of nice to have one not written by Brian Michael Bendis and I really like Brian Michael Bendis I think he does good stuff but they kind of throw him in all their big tenfold stuff so it's kind of cool getting one without his quick give, him, give him a break you know since Wolverine yeah. is back though is X-23 still gonna be called Wolverine or is she gonna go back to just they being haven't X? really said yet so okay. it's like that's so is there gonna be two Thors running around are there gonna be two Hulks running around like that's I'm having fun imagining the two Thors banging each other. I mean, are they related? Maybe there'll be oh, some it's, sort of it's, it's a his girlfriend. Jane, it's a Jane Foster. Yeah. Maybe there'll be like a nickname oh, contest. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Or they'll be like, oh, here's, a, here's a list of nicknames I as the Hulk have been considering. <laughs> Please vote and decide what everyone would like to call me. I mean, that would be far more interesting than what they're doing. <laughs> they can all have shirts with like one and two on them. Yeah. yeah. And then have fights over which one gets one and which one gets two. Uh, but really quick before I, I move out of this thing, the one thing I will say about it is that you should read it. It's it's definitely kind of cool to get a new Marvel thing and actually a new Marvel thing, not just another rehash of one of their old stories. Mm. Um, but Marvel, I really want to say, is being total dicks to retailers and it's unacceptable and they should change their game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. I don't want to go, because it'll take me an hour to explain it here. But oh, they're being... Okay. All right. Here, I'll, I'll, it here, I can explain it really quick. Okay. They're forcing people to buy more books than they can sell. And when DC requested the same thing, they said, whatever you don't sell, we'll buy back for the first 10 issues of every run. Marvel said, we'll just throw them in the trash. Mm. So they have to eat the cost. That's Go Marvel! Well, how, is, how is that promotional of your brand in any way? Or, I know. or respectful yeah. to your fans? Yeah, it's horrible. Boo. Yep. 
horrible. So there was a lot of chains that are boycotting legacy and all legacy mm. books, and they're big chains, and yeah. they're just not carrying them until they stop this bullshit. I'm Hooray like, for Marvel! You're still doing movies, right? At yeah. least you got that going. <laughs> I read more DC comics anyway, so. Well, that's it for me, though. If somebody wants to go into something a little bit more fun or positive, please do. <laughs> I have fun and positive. Awesome. Uh, on the west side, on Thursday night, uh, in the general vicinity of Culver, I live on the east side, so when I drive that way, it just feels like I'm going far away. <laughs> so, um, But the Arsenal hosts magic every Thursday night that is uh, presented by my friend Michael Rangel, who is stunning. It's very sort of heartfelt and emotional magic. On Thursday nights, there's more walk-around tableside magic, but then he also hosts a show called Luminar, which is coming up on, uh, it's Sundays, I think it's Sundays once a month, but if you look up Luminar or Michael Rangel, you'll find this um, very interesting, spiritual, beautiful uh, magic event, and I think everybody should check it out. How do you spell Luminar? L-U-M-I-N-A-R. Glad I asked. Yeah, with a little, <laughs> it's French, with a little sure. flame for the eye. Question oh. for clarification. Tableside yeah. magic? What's the difference? Yeah, so uh, tableside or strolling or walk around, all sort of different names for the same thing, mm-hmm. is uh, frequent of restaurant magicians where you sort of walk around and you see who's not in the middle of scarfing down a steak <laughs> and share a few interesting pieces of magic with them while they're waiting for their food or... Oh. or yeah, and sort of, you know, you bounce around. And actually, the Magic Castle has a strolling showdown, which is bonkers. There's no food at all involved. It's like speed dating for magicians where you just, like, <laughs> run f- between tables to, like, 35 different tables. And you're like, magic! <laughs> and wow. uh, and hopefully whatever you have, because you're doing it for a bunch of magicians who are judging you, which is terrifying, uh, which is why I only participate so far as a judge, not <laughs> right, right. as a contestant, because it's scary. Uh yeah, so they basically uh, run around and try to present as many unique pieces that magicians will be like, oh, that's cool enough to, you know, give you a high score. Oh. Yeah. Neat. Cool. And let me tell you what my, my other Thursday thing that I did immediately following the Arsenal was to pop by the Corner Door, which has recently incorporated. It's like a speakeasy, um, pretty pretty basic whiskey type bar but uh they've incorporated some alice in wonderland drinks into their menu i read about this yes i also read about it and i was like look i'm on the west side already i should go (laughs) drink these drinks and uh one of them in particular is so fabulous it's a a mushroom infused bourbon drink that's served basically on a slice of tree trunk in a very hefty crystal glass. It's like an $18 drink. So, you know, have it once, but it's worth <laughs> but it's worth it once. With little meringue mushrooms and cookie dirt, and it's under a cake dome filled with hickory smoke. That's bananas. So it's like a, <laughs> a that dessert. sounds like bananas it's not yeah. like not No, no. Drink. It's like a dessert meal drink what? Huh. show extravaganza. But I was very impressed with it and if you happen to be swinging around on the west side and not driving then uh, of Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. Should mention also of Los Angeles. (laughs) Yes, yes. Right. Of Los Angeles. Well, the west side of anywhere. (laughs) If you you look hard enough, it'll show up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's the magical quality of Alice, right? Yeah, there you go. Wonderland. Just dive through a mirror. You'll find it. Yeah. Uh, Next. Um, I'll go. I didn't do so much this week. It was very much a I'm really tired after work. and You have to keep... say yes more. <laughs> I have to say yes more. And then, yeah. Uh, but yesterday, while we were cleaning and relaxing, uh, we watched Fright Night, the first one. Mm. Uh, and I have never actually seen the first Fright Night. I saw the remake. And I really enjoy the remake. And I discovered after watching the first one, I still really enjoy the remake. Uh, uh, Something about that David Tennant. Well, it's not just David Tennant. I just kind of really enjoyed Vincent being more of this like tragic, beaten down guy who needs to get over his past to help this younger guy defeat a vampire and not just kind of like a bumbling actor that suddenly discovers that vampires are real. Uh, I just didn't attach myself to that. And I kind of hated the best friend. That guy was a terrible actor. He was annoying, and he sounded like he never actually reached puberty. His voice was too high the whole time. Uh, he was having a lot of fun. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I was having a lot of fun. Ugh. What have you done to me? Every time he was on got camera, a sag I was like, go away. <laughs> maybe if I'd seen it when I was young. It was definitely more of a special effects extravaganza than the remake was. Do you remember the year that the... 
original, original came out? I think it was like 80, 45. I don't know. Mid eighties, but it was because there's always a, I I haven't seen it, but you have to like experience things through the special filter of oh, the, it was so eighties. Yeah, oh, okay. I did enjoy the super eighties moments, like the 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 what they were wearing and the yeah. hair. I loved that the Amy was uh, the neighbor from Married with Children because it bugged me for oh. a while. But like, who are you? You look, <laughs> you sound so familiar. And then when she became a vampire, every time they'd cut back to her, her hair was different. No, no. It was so Amazing. funny. Like, it was big. Now it's flat. Now no. it's curly. Now it's red. That is, <laughs> that is one of the perks. Of being a vampire? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Continuity error. Oh, and then the moment guys. she wasn't oh. a vampire, it was short again, and she was a brunette again. No, which come was like, on. <laughs> wow. I don't know. It was that I enjoyed, but if I'm going to rewatch one, I'm still just going to rewatch the original or the oh. remake. Sorry, the remake wears its camp on its sleeve a little bit more. Yeah. Colin Farrell is having the time of his life. Oh yeah, know. and Anton Yelchin. I love oh, Anton Yelchin. Yeah, we, uh, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. Anton Yelchin, the one, so one of the, yeah, could have been one of the greats. Fright Night is one of those weird ones. Yeah, it's just like the remake is actually really, really fun, but. Yeah. It, yeah, just kind of transcends I, it. Very with that. different. Yeah. yeah, I also love that because I didn't know David Tennant was in this. I didn't know that was David Tennant until he disassembled his costume, and I went, "Oh, oh, oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, next, I am reading a romance novel. Ooh, Which, uh, is it dirty? Yeah, I love it when it's, <laughs> it's dirty. Called, it's called "Worth the Wait" by Joey W. Hill, and she's known for writing BDSM. Um, so it's sort of like what Fifty Shades of Grey wishes it was, although it made a lot more money because um, hers are only available on Kindle. Um, but actually, you might be able to buy paperback. Um, but uh, I think romance novels get a lot of shit, but the same people who shit on romance novels are happy to read a Maxim or a Playboy. Like, that's not the equivalent, you know? Right. Um, like, somehow, you know, everyone's praising Hugh Hefner, but they'll be like, hey, romance novels are stupid. Um, I haven't seen anyone say that on my Facebook. Yeah, a lot of people on mine have, <laughs> yeah. and I think he's gross. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, uh, no, but it's really, yeah. it's it's interesting because it's about, like, I totally see, it's the first time reading a romance novel, and I totally see why they're popular. Because yeah. it's a it's not just about, people think it's just, like, a sex scene. It's not about the sex scene. It's about the seduction. And it's about, like, you know. It's about the fault, like. Yeah, getting getting to that point. Yeah, getting to that point. That, the and thing is not as important it, as getting it, to it. It's and, vicarious yeah. living. It's like there's a woman if who just... If a guy said that to me on a date, I'd be like, what am I saying <laughs> myself up for? But it's, like, it's about like a woman who just like has all these bad experiences with romance and has sworn them off and she's just not going to have romance anymore. And then she meets this guy oh, who's God. really good at ropes. And she's just like, uh, and then he's and and he's a dom, and she's just like never done submissive stuff before, and she's like interested in it, and and he can tell right away, and then he's just like, she's like, no, I don't want to get into this life, and he's like, really, and and he'll touch her, and kind of sounds like Fifty Shades right now. Yeah, but but the difference is, uh, I think, because I haven't actually read Fifty Shades, but I know from a lot of people in the BDSM community, the problem with Fifty Shades is it's not as much about like consent and about like, because there's a difference in in BDSM, it's not abuse. It the dom is not abusing the submissive the submissive no no i'm but for the audience um but like the submissive is allowing permission and that's what the the novel is more about her allowing herself to fall into like being tied up and all this and it's a it's really like you read i mean honestly i read one chapter and i have to put it down for a minute because i'm just like whoa shit um so yeah highly recommended <laughs> so do you specifically read it at home or are you also reading oh, it like reading on it the bus home. i'm just reading it at home but i also have it on my tablet so it's not like someone's gonna go oh scandal <laughs> you're, you're, you're like a, uh, a starbucks and you're like girl get it and everyone's like what <laughs> that's some good reading yeah and then it becomes reading hour where you're just like yeah. you have everyone at starbucks <laughs> <laughs> sitting around you on the floor listen around adults and <laughs> And then he kissed the back of her neck. <laughs> I have a friend who writes uh, like uh, romance novels, but like fantasy based and like Greek gods based, huh. and like all that sort of. She even has a retelling of like the Adam and Eve story, like as a modern thing. Cool. It's a romance thing. So like I'm aware of the genre, and I've read the the fantasy based one. I was like, oh, I can see, I can see what's going on here. What like, is what is this person's name? So you can look her up. Uh, Amalia Dillon. Cool. I'll I'll, I'll 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 give you a link and put the link in the show notes. Yeah. John, where have you been doing? So I did a a D&D game last night, but I was the DM, and it was very fun, but it was a lot of work, and I recommend <laughs> giving yourself as much time as you need to do that, and don't be too hard on yourself. I'm still learning things and making mistakes, yeah. and uh, just when I follow up with them afterwards, just to see their reaction of like how much fun they had, 
it was really cool. It was really cool and kind of encouraging because it's like, oh, they picked this up. They got this. And I made them retell what happened the last time. And just hearing how they how they picked up what I was what I put down, so to speak, how they kind of approached it and what they got from it was really cool. So I recommend it. And I mean, D and D is really fun, and it's a little bit more fun to play than to create the thing because you're just in, there for the ride. But creating it's also pretty fun too. Hmm. You're basically making a story, and you are doing game design in the process. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, are we ready? To, <laughs> are we ready to fight? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm always ready to fight. So today's battle kicks off Halloween month ish thing uh, after the hype. <laughs> be a little more excited uh, about it. I mean, we well, love Halloween. I do love Halloween. That's why I do horror movies throughout the entire month. Halloween ish in but October. I, just, I never know what to call it. Yeah. So the major theme of this month will be guest choice. So every guest that we're having on is picking the movie that we're covering, but we like to kick off Halloween with a battle. So this year. We've done Friday the 13th battles. We've done favorite horror movie battles. We've done worst horror movie battles. We've done a lot of things, and we're starting to, like... We did remake. We did remake last year. That was fun. So we've done a lot of horror battles, and we're like, well, time to scrape the bottom of the barrel. What else can we figure up? And then Chewie came up with an idea that was way better than where I was going to go. If you would let me finish before we get all defensive. Mm. (laughs) uh, With romantic horror movies. Uh, And now... As interesting as that sounds, it was very tough to figure out romantic horror. For some movies. reason, it's really easy for me. Like I, I just thought it was things off the top of my brain, and then people, other people were like, "What do you mean romantic horror?" Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's a thing. Well, that's kind of at <laughs> yeah. first I was like, I was like, wait, what romantic horror? And then as I like, yeah, John immediately replied, "I have no idea." <laughs> right, and then and she and then, responded with pictures of Kenneth Branagh naked. Which was <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, was, that was great. But Coo. then like I saw those, and I was like. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, and then I then I just went to one page over on Google. And I was like, "Here's all of the ones that you should have thought of immediately." Yeah. I was like, "Oh, oh, bad, mine, bad movie fan." Mine was not in any list, but I'm very excited to talk about it. So wait, what are some of the ones on the list that we're not talking about? Uh, so the ones that warm I warm bodies is warm bodies. Oh is yeah, I thought of, of that one immediately um, too. That one's in all of them. Uh, Crimson Peak. Sex Crimson Peak movies. makes sense. Yeah. Um, Pretty much anything that's kind of gothic is based on romance. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I was trying, there's one major one that I was like, oh, I guess I'd be romantic, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, the only, since I'm not, I'm not going to be defending a movie, like literally the only horror movie on my shelf was Brotherhood of the Wolf. And I was like, that's a romantic horror movie. I could have yeah. gone with that, kind of, but now I don't have to. Yeah. Uh, oh, Sweeney Todd was on a lot of lists. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah like. Ugh. It's weird. Like a it, fucked up romance. Yeah. Oh, wait till we get to my movie. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was weird coming up with these because it was like at first, like you realize that you don't think about these horror movies quite in this way. Hey, what are our movies? Well, uh, mine is Bram Stoker's Dracula from nice. 1992. Mine is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from I think 94. Yeah, you do better than I'm gonna do. Mine is Buffy the Vampire Slayer from 1992. Nice. Uh, and I have Thirst from 2000. 2000- <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's when it happened in Korea and when it came here. So, That's true. You know. Well, because no, his movies come over pretty quick, so split the difference. Yeah, it, it's 2000. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't actually see Thirst, but I looked it up. So, is there a Korean and an American version, or did they? No, just uh, a lot of Korean movies take like a year and a half to actually right, jump right. over. That's, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I have not seen Thirst or Frankenstein. Most people seen. haven't seen. Well, my movie. we're going to convince you to watch them. Okay. Yeah. Or at least Thirst, because I'm going to win. Because that's what confidence sounds like. <laughs> uh, uh, but Emily is our judge today. If you cannot tell by her saying she's not watching anything, uh, and we came with props this time that you can't oh, yeah. see, but you can hear. Yeah. That oh, sounds horrible to everyone in their sounds, car. This is going to be so good. That sounds so judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, anyone on the 405 is just going to swerve a little bit like, whoa, oh, God. Libby, you said you were doing uh, Buffy, right? Yeah. Doing, okay, I Buffy. just didn't hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I'm glad. So not Rosemary's Baby. That's good. Because I was like, whoever picks Rosemary's Baby is just doomed. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's not how, exactly romantic. <laughs> that's how it was sold to me. No, that's what? actually, I was very interested to hear someone defend that, but I wanted to give you the choice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, it's made by a rapist, so I was just immediately going to reject it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we, we also had uh, The Collector on the table, which is kind of just torture porn and really fucked up and i was like well oh, i'm yeah. excited to see how he's going to defend this as a romantic horror movie but especially I, to someone who loathes torture porn. yeah it, it was going to be an interesting uh <laughs> an interesting part there but at least i got to watch it <laughs> that was, i mean it is kind of like a fucked up home alone and that part was cool um oh yeah but the rest of it was right, who's going first movie. though emily's the judge uh i want to hear about frankenstein all right. Well, you know, Frankenstein. 
All right. Well, I'm going to start. There we go. It's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, directed and starring Kenneth Branagh from 1994. Uh, and it is considered one of the most faithful adaptations of the book, even though there are some liberties. Of course, it's a movie. Uh, but this is like fever Kenneth Branagh, like... I am young, I am strong and gorgeous, and I am making these movies where I am king of Shakespeare, and now I'm going to do Frankenstein. And he held nothing back. Uh, the romance is just on the wall. There's, like, shades of red everywhere, specifically on the important characters, like Helen Bonham, his brother in the movie, and the way it's used, just the set design with the triangles and these grand staircases that make no sense it's like you're watching an opera on camera and oh sorry get a wiggle out i know i'm losing time i always do this in these things um and the movie is so passionate it's all like you can't contain victor's like passion for science and and his passion for his soon-to-be wife lover played by helen i always forget her name in the movie uh so he's, at first he's a little conflicted on which one he wants to concentrate on. And she says, no, go be a scientist. Go be a doctor. So he goes and does that. And he just becomes obsessed with death. Because it's Victor Frankenstein. And he just, he's like, I'm going to end all death because of how much he loves everyone around him. So he can't handle them dying anymore. So it's all about his love trying to stop this from, horrible thing from happening to people. And then, of course, when he figures out how to bring people back to life and create life, he feels bad. Be like, oh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and then you get into the huge conflict of the film, which is about a scientist versus a romantic, essentially. The victor versus his monster. Who, someone who's all logic and the other ones that's all emotion. And it's the fighting together and against each other. And then it's also about what's more important. Is it my work or is it my love? And then Victor, kind of late in the game, chooses his love. And then he loses his love because Frank, the monster wants a lover. And then they fight over her. And it's kind of a gross moment when they're literally tugging at her going, she's mine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still just... The, this movie is a fever film. The editing style, it was like pre-crazy late 90s editing. It was kind of ahead of its time in the way that they depicted the story. And it, it wastes no time. You actually don't get that much time to breathe because it's just going from epic scale to epic scale. When he's making the monster, Kenneth Branagh is, I mean, he's gorgeous in that sequence. He, he is, he's got his leather pants on. He's running around. Well, he's he, making a monster and yeah. leather pants. He's a scientist leather who wears pants. leather pants. It and is no shirt. historically oh, accurate. Man. That, boy, and you he, guys, that's going to be tough to compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he runs into the room wearing a big flowing cloak, and then he throws wait, off he, the wait, cloak. Wait, 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 is he still shirtless he's with the shirt, cloak yes, on? Yes, yes. He oh, throws guys. off the cloak, he starts grabbing the chains, <laughs> pushing around the monster, getting him to his thing that's filled with electric eels. Ooh, that sounds homoerotic. And, oh, and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then once he makes the monster, he pulls him out, and they're both covered in this goo, which you think that's about... That's really homoerotic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to lift him up, and it's a kind of an elongated sequence of them it's struggling about two with each other, about trying to stand in this... Uh, bio goo from the container it's insane so you got that but really a homoerotic sequence and then once he finally gets married to helen and they have their wedding night the sequence of them fondling each other is intense you actually start to feel like i'm intruding right now i should uh, uh <laughs> you guys should have your moment and then later on you found out that he was actually sleeping with her and cheating on his wife but oh, movies that's behind the it scenes. was real passion guys real passion is it and scary Yes no. and no. no. I mean, it was scarier when I was younger. <laughs> Nowadays, it's not as scary, but it's very romantic because it's all, it really is, it's all about science versus, versus emotions. Like, should you be doing this? Is this something you should be doing? Or should we just be with the ones we love and forget trying to create na or control nature? I mean, which is what Frankenstein is at the heart of the story. And they, he does a pretty good job depicting that in the movie. He's just, it's very frantic. Like, you have to be able to watch the movie, otherwise you're going to miss plot points left and right. <laughs> it does not... It's not slow at all. <laughs> it's very fast. And I got 14 seconds left, and really, you should just watch it because, like, it is an opera. Like, he designed sets like it's an opera. It is sweeping. It is bold. It is romantic as fuck, really. 
and I highly recommend it. You might not love it, but it's worth a watch. All right. So in the novel, can I have questions? Yeah. Okay. So in the novel, Dr. Frankenstein's kind of a dick. And the monster, there's a lot from the monster's perspective. Mm -hmm. Is the movie like that or is the movie just, okay. So here's my thing is that you say it's romantic because of everything that you just said. Uh, Mm. I don't need to repeat it. But you really made it sound like he was like, yeah, love or science. love." The movie I watched, which supposedly Mm. was the same one. Uh, he was all science. He could give no shits about his wife until the very end. Not to mention, you really breeze over the fact that his wife is his sister. Uh, uh, not biological. Still, they she grew up as his sister. Yeah, she they, doesn't come to live with them until they're like ten. They call each other brother and sister throughout Ew. the entire opening of the movie. It's gross Ew. as shit. They're not it's actually Lannister shit. They're not yeah. actually blood related guys. It is not Lannister. But still, they're not twins. Still, like the before he makes out, I was like, "You're my sister, right?" And she's like, "Uh huh." And they're like, mwah, mwah, mwah. And it's like, Ugh, why? They were destined for each other. <laughs> it's gross. And, and, and you also have Pharaoh's Robert De Niro David. as Frankenstein's monster, which was it just ruins every scene with the no, monster. He did a good job. Because he can't shake his voice. He just sounds like Robert De Niro trying that's, to be a monster. It's that's so, just your hang up. So all uh, I hear, you're talking to me. Yeah, that's all I hear. I hear you talking to me and forget about it. He does not have a Brooklyn I'm a monster over here. He does not. But if he did, he does not have an accent. Hey, I'm walking I over here. The shit out of that. You are just making that up. More like no, it's Mary still Shelley's. there. It bothered me the whole movie. That's just you. Now, does doesn't the scientist in this movie still create a companion for the monster too? Oh yeah, after his wife get her, gets her heart he, ripped out, he, he literally turns- rips out her heart. Yeah. Because he... He's uh, like, ha-ha, jumps out Victor the window. Victor <laughs> refuses to make him a companion. So right. He's actually got a wonderful line. If I, He says, if I am not... If I'm not satisfied and you make me a companion, I will be with you on your wedding night. It's a great line in the movie. And then Victor is just dumb and doesn't take that to heart. And he goes off and gets married and then... Well, he comes, the monster comes in oh, and rips so her So he heart does out. refuse to make yes. the monster companion. Yeah. And then he comes and kills yeah. Frankenstein's yeah. wife. So yeah. then he makes a monster companion for himself. Because he loves then, his wife yeah. so much, he immediately no, he putting her, in, he loves her so much. He brings her back so to life. That he's putting her in yeah. mortal danger. Yeah, yeah. he well, loves the idea of having that a wife. he created. Yes, like, it, it's well, not romantic. It's fucked up. He ruins that woman's life. <laughs> I've never said that Victor's the smartest man in the world. He's just a really good scientist, and he's really bad at following his heart. He try he is a slave to his uh, logic, and he thinks that he'll win and he'll be okay. And he's not because Narcissist. the other creature, the other <laughs> yeah. creature, is driven by passion. Which in the end, a lot of times, passion is way stronger than science, and that's what is illustrated in the movie: passion. Sure, passion, fun. But then if uh, Victor was a true romantic, he would have given the monster a passionate companion. They could have gone and had monster sex all over the place and not killed Victor's yeah, and wife. That would have broken the ice. Yeah. Well, and the only reason he didn't do it was because it was a girl that he knew. So the, he makes the monster out of random people, like flesh to be reused. Hmm. And then a girl dies, a girl that the monster well, his finds emotions, attractive. Well, that's because his emotions start to get in the way. Or yeah. he had an emotional connection to this lady. So he doesn't want to so, make but, her a slave should, to this other yeah, man. Yeah, you shouldn't just like be like, oh, guess what? I just brought you to life what so ha- you can bone this dude. That's fucked up. That yeah. is also it, fucked up. It, it, <laughs> True, but... But he, he could have built her out of also reusable... Yeah. <laughs> did you, did they, you could guys, have, they could have had a moment. He could have built a <laughs> companion and sent them on a date. Because that was something mm. they covered on Penny Dreadful. Like, um, uh, Billy Piper's character was just like... She was made into Frankenstein's monster, and she was like, "Hey, fuck all of you," and became like this great feminist symbol because she basically was like, "This is seriously fucked up. I'm not your whore. Fuck off." Yeah, but that would have been better than what we got here, which was a girl who went, "Oh, wait, I'm a zombie thing. All right, I'm just gonna kill myself." Actually, yeah. she she kind of says that, but she also just gets incredibly upset by them fighting over her, and then ends herself again. Yeah, that's and she romantic. takes out the entire building with her. Oh. Her running through that hallway covered in flames and then everything else bursting into flames around her is like one of the greatest illustrations of female rage ever yeah mm. it, that, it's, that sounds uh, it's cool but i wouldn't say it's romantic <laughs> but is it romantic oh, it's super romantic a woman covered in flames taking out everything around her i kind of call that romantic there's a lot of game of thrones in this movie yeah there's a lot of game of there's thrones a lot of different types of romance and t- really just made me think that kenneth Branagh should have directed an episode of game of thrones yeah, at some man. point God. <laughs> i mean honestly i would love kenneth Branagh to remake this movie as a more mature uh, director 
And I think he it would have been a much better film in that way. But it, I don't think Kenneth Branagh is ever going to get more. Maybe mature. the lesson here is that Kenneth Branagh should never wear a shirt. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that, those scenes were. Good. I don't think he has that chiseled chest anymore. It's yeah. regretfully. I don't so. know. That's maybe maybe like we should call idea. him, <laughs> call him, <laughs> and yeah, ask yeah. for a Leather selfie. Leather pants, no shirt, and a cloak. That is yeah. a look. It is. Oh, uh, and the especially long, for the a long scientist. curly hair. The long curly hair. Don't That's forget about that. Every scientist I've ever met could pull that off. I mean, there's no amount of things you could say to. Like oversell that hair, like that hair was really good. Like we, we need to move on. Yeah, it's right. out of time. <laughs> oh, uh, I vaguely rem- I loved Buffy the TV show, so I would like to hear you talk about Buffy the movie, which is a completely different animal. The movie is a completely different animal. You can start my time. All right, because the movie is epic and amazing, and every bit of it is perfect. I feel, and I just rewatched it last night, uh, thinking that I should brush up on it. And the sad thing, and I know I'm wasting time to say this, the sad thing about it is it is not on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or Xfinity. It so was I, at one point. I had, yeah, I thought so. So what's funny is I had to watch it as like a picture in picture on YouTube sped up, and everybody was talking real fast, and everybody got killed real fast, and there was so <laughs> much like fast sexiness. Um, but I just wanted to brush up, and then I watched, and I was like, oh. I've seen this movie a hundred times. I, I know this movie. I know this very romantic movie. And uh, Emily, having spoken to you just for moments before, I'm going to uh, play to your personal preferences and tell you that it is not about the climactic moment. It's about getting there. <laughs> it is about the seduction. Oh. You have a meet cute early in the movie, Luke Perry, Christy Swanson, uh, Buffy and Pike. They are hanging out in the movie theater with their friends. They're kind of dicks to each other. Frankly, everybody's a dick at the beginning of this movie because they don't have the the maturity to realize that vampires are A, real, and they're going to have to kill them, and there are more important things in life than going to movies and going shopping and being assholes. So they meet in that way, and then they have a few <coughs> other little uh, run-ins, one in, in a diner, which really is like way too seedy to be a place that high schoolers are hanging out. But... Uh, Buffy does a real quick like ninja move and slices up uh, Pike's best friend's hot dog, which like is like a, you know, badass. I busted your wiener move, which is pretty amazing. (laughs) And like, I feel like Pike sort of takes notice of her like badassery at that moment. And then, of course, Pike's friend, Benny, played by David Arquette, becomes a vampire. He gets yoinked by the bad guys and becomes a vampire. And so Pike's just going to like bail and then uh, Buffy saves his life in a beautiful moment of, of vampires slaying badassery. And they end up like beginning their seductive dance of romance towards their ultimate love. So uh, Pike and Buffy end up sort of teaming up, although rather Pike is trying real hard to be the guy that wants to help Buffy and be part of this, knowing that she's clearly the boss. And she's always like, no, no, no. Like you take off, you stay here. Let me take care of this. But he's like preparing. So he's like a real good, like sidekick, uh, support guy throughout. Uh, they have a moment in this battle where of course they land in the, uh, classic kiss moment where, uh, she's on top of them and, and they, they don't kiss in that moment, but they have that real close, sexy, heart throbbing, leading up moment where they're really starting to fall for each other. I took notes. <laughs> A lot I took notes. I took notes last night. I was like, ooh, I got to remember the moments. Uh, and one of the reasons that I took notes, and I'll, I'll take two little hops because I only have a minute left, is because there are actually three love stories here. There's the classic romance between Buffy and Pike, the, the man and the woman who will ultimately end up together. There's Buffy's love for being a slayer and for combat, which is reluctant because in the beginning she's like, fuck you, I'm a cheerleader, I'm having a great time in high school, I love shopping, I'm not killing vampires, that sucks. And then uh, Merrick, her her mentor, starts putting her on open graves, which is super sketchy, but by realizing that vampires are real and that she has like some fucking badass skills to kill them, she falls in love with the idea that she is the chosen one and that she has to kill these vampires and that she has to save her high school and her town. And then she uh, tries to stay at cheer practice, but ends up finally like abandoning, abandoning her high school, quote, responsibilities so she can train and become the badassest slayer ever because she is the chosen one. And Lothos, the 
head vampire who's been destroying slayers for centuries is uh, trying to seduce her as well so he can just kill her. But she's entirely too smart for him and has these moments from uh, her mentor. And then the last little love story is unrequited. Paul Rubin's character, which I only recently learned is Amelin. I don't think his name is ever said. He's like the... Um, He's the Renfield. He's like the guy who's kowtowing to Lothos. But he's just like, love, love, love. I'm doing things for you. I'm giving you things. And Lothos is like, ah, fuck you. And he gets killed. So uh, at the very end, there's the prom. All the seniors are invited. All the seniors are vampires, which is a big problem. Buffy says she's going to battle them alone. But Pike comes in to help. They all win. And everyone is madly in love. Ooh, two seconds left. Watch Buffy. <laughs> but it's going to be hard to watch because you're going to have to watch it <laughs> just really buy fast it. on YouTube. Just buy it on buy Amazon. It. Buy it. Yeah. And I thought I owned it. And maybe I do. But I've moved so many times. It's probably in a DVD or VHS. You always lose like at least a dozen DVDs in a move. Right. We have it on That's why we just never unpack DVD. a bunch of DVDs. Yeah. So we just don't lose those. Oh. Yeah. Except then we don't see them. So kind of defeats the purpose. All right. We got to take her down now. Yep. Is it scary? It is not scary. Okay. It is... Gory, not gory like in bloodbathy, but like there's a lot of stabbing, there's a lot of biting, there's a lot of vampire-y things. Uh, Amelin loses an arm, which is fun. It's a comedy horror. Oh. I was about to it's say, yeah. very much comedy. What makes it a horror movie as a versus just sort of like a mild action movie that's funny? Because it's still vampires. It's still like pulling from the classic horror tropes of the... The Lothos, who's like the Vlad Dracul and his, you know, um, minion, uh, Amelin, who's like the Renfield. And, he, and he's still converting vampires all over the place. And these vampires are converging on everyone. The town will be destroyed. So you still have the fear of the whole town becoming vampires or dead, but not the, the terror because otherwise I'd have to watch it with my hands over my eyes because <laughs> I'm scared. There is a lack of actual terror in the movie. It is very much more comedy, but and it is so early 90s. Yes. Uh, if you can't yeah. handle... Neon squiggles <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and one thing that always annoys me in this movie that is not very romantic, it's kind of a weird misogynistic thing that they got rid of with the TV show, uh, is she feels menstrual cramps when she's near vampires. That is true. And I'm, every time I'm like, really? That's a horrific what? spider sense. Uh, it, is, it is a horrific spider sense, but it's still her power because it's her warning sign. And even though I agree that's a real problem and I would take some drugs for that um, because I would find that very can, frustrating. Can we have a different type of warning signal, guys? Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. I do, I do, however, feel that like the whole movie is very consensual. Unlike most other horror films that are like very rapey and creaty and mm. steely of women. And Buffy's like clearly leading the charge throughout the whole movie, despite her frustrations with cramps. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, frankly, is a thing we all do, right? Mm. I'm trying to think of ways to take this movie yeah, down. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough one to take down. But like the, the major thing that I have for it is that as much as you said it was romantic, I don't really see a lot of romance in the movie. Like it, it does, like it, it plays up like the high school romance in a mm-hmm. way, but it, it's also kind of. Like, it's it kind of it, it it situational it steps romance. A, yeah, it, yeah, it's very like speed. Uh, yeah, it takes it like, kind of steps aside for the the stabby bits, the um, yeah. the vampire bits. Well, I just think it's more of like what you were saying with speed. Of you're gonna be in love during the sequence, but the moment the adrenaline rush is gone. You might not be very compatible. Yeah, like I see Luke Perry riding out of town. Like, I don't, well, she they do out <laughs> ride out of town. Yeah. Oops, I'm sorry. Hit the mic. They do ride. I'm getting so animated yeah. that now I'm just like <laughs> whacking everything. I'll uh, I'll put my hands down. Uh, they do ride out of town together. Ride off into the sunrise on the motorcycle. And the curious thing that I was ruminating on this morning is that she clearly can drive a motorcycle and so can Luke Perry and even though she's like completely leading the charge all the way throughout the movie at the very end she gets on the back of his bike which for a minute I was like mm, I don't know if I like that but I kind of do because I've had a lot of like when you have a partnership with somebody and you like really love somebody then like sometimes you want to take the reins and sometimes you want to submit and have them take the reins and she's just like spent her whole week fucking killing vampires and so now it's like oh I'm going to take care of you for a minute. You chill. Yeah, that's nice. But I just, I, so nice. I just, I never got the... So beautiful. It, I, just, <laughs> I never bought their chemistry. Even like from the beginning. Yeah. Like, and I just, Luke I never, Perry's hair is terrible, by the way. 
That um, that the, must be why I never no, bought the chemistry. It's, it's all about the right Caesar now. It's all about the haircut hair. bangs. I don't understand why that was ever a thing in the 90s. Well, no, he has and the an soul enormous patch. forehead. He's yeah. got to cover it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, in my movie, there's nothing but great hair. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, they're still high schoolers, too. It's, it's, yeah. it's a that's sweet true. high school romance, but you have her love affair with her chosen status as the one true slayer throughout the centuries. I could, I could probably see that if that was more of like, that was the crux of the whole thing, being like, oh, you either are a slayer and love it or give it up and have normal life. Like, that, like, really strong, like, more, that, that's the whole thing, not necessarily the Lothos and all that. Yeah, she had the opportunity. She, you know, she tried to step away from it, but she was drawn I don't to it. I think you can ever say no to being a slayer. Like, but that's the thing, it's like an easy choice, you. right? Like, if it's the easiest choice, it's like, I don't know if that's romantic. I mean, ultimately, if you're chosen and you say no, then the vampire just kills you and then you're dead, right? Or you're a vampire. Yeah. It's always a, like, is there romance in being the one or is, or are you just like, ah, crap, well, now this is what I have to do. I guess this is my life now. It's a, it's a little <laughs> both. It's the, it's the romantic idea of having a calling, whether you choose to accept it or not. Faith kind of refused to be a slayer for a while. She ended up she had a very with sad the, life, though. the mayor and. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, lot, it's a lot of responsibility. Faith is the reason Brian stopped watching Buffy. She Aww. sure is. <laughs> not a fan of that character. Aww. Oof. That and I just I, wa- I tried binge watching. It's, it's a rough show to binge watch, I think. That's the show I watch when I'm sad and yeah. I'm maybe as a second time through. Like the first time that was the only way I watched it was binging just because I'd never seen it. Heard, like I'd heard of it but nothing about it. Yeah. yeah. No, so. if, if I'm having a really shit day and everything's gone to hell, I'll put in the Zeppo. Yeah. Like that's a consistent. That's the episode about Xander. Um, I mean, it's a incredibly charming show and i yeah. thought it was really good i just i after watching it for like three weeks straight i'm like all right i'm, I'm just done yeah. well i, I also it. pressured you into it. yeah you sure did <laughs> hey uh, it is it is an excellent show it i is. still i still have to say that the movie is my favorite like if i had to choose between the show and the movie i would choose the movie all the time i say that all the time and people get really mad at me <laughs> okay well I'm, both uh, equally yeah, yeah. we should move on yeah. yep john it's Emily's or, yeah, choice. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was okay. gonna. I mean, I'm curious about that, but I feel like let's save that for last. Okay. Let's, let's hit it. Let's get to Dracula. Dracula. Is that, is an, I didn't make that pronunciation. No, Bram, it's, 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 uh, Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula. It is a story about two lovers bound by time and divided by death and damnation. <laughs> and it is bookended by death and damnation and redemption. So, like, they are. That's this is the story of Dracula, and um, I forget the name of the lover. Uh, but she ends up, it's Winona Ryder for sake of shorthand. Um, so he is a great soldier for the church, a fighter. He kills violently and he does everything the church asks. And in the end, uh, the Turks, I think it is, they, they trick uh, his lover to thinking he's dead and she commits suicide. But because she kills herself, that is a damnable offense and she will never make it to the afterlife. She will never see her lover Dracul again. And instead of, like, for all his service, it... He curses God. He curses the church and he uh, drinks, like he stabs the cross and uh, curses it and says, I, I'm done with God. I defy you. And blood erupts from the cross and he drinks it. And it creates this kind of circular thing of thirst and damnation. And basically the whole m- meat and the ju- like the, <laughs> the juice of the middle of this movie is uh, cont- power, control, uh, agency, and just what that is in relation to choosing to defy, in this case, God, the church, and all that, and just what damnation means. And a lot of it is every character has to wrestle with their agency and what that means, how they take control of their lives, and just the kind of the the perversion of this love that bookends the movie. And that's really all that vampires or Dracula, like this whole like vampirism, stems from is just wanting to be God, wanting to control the weather, control the elements, control creatures, mankind, earth, and just the twist on that and how that then you want to control people. You want to sub, like consume and subvert and uh, subjugate people. And it's just this, this wrestling and toil in the middle of that book ended by this love story. So at the same time, and what kind of ties it in for me to the horror element of the romance is that this is not pretty. It is kind of icky. And it makes you kind of like, this is not good what, you know, like Dracula sets his sight on Mina Harker. Uh, and as he basically takes Jonathan Harker aside, gets re- kind of feeds him to his... Uh, 
basically gets raped. Yeah, yeah, he gets raped. And and that's that's watching this again, it made me realize like, holy crap. Because at first I was like, I just don't like how it, the movie treats its women. But then as I backed up and watched this again, I was like, hold on, this is this movie is treating everyone. It's this is too reductive to say it, but almost like everyone is getting raped in some way mm. of this. And what was fascinating is just how this is so still tied into this love story on both ends of this of Dracula wanting to meet his lover again. And he sees her in Mina and, and just this, this complicated relationship. And I think that's what for me started to kind of scare me more watching this again, kind of give me this sense of dread is that like these people lose control of themselves and have it taken away. And in Mina's case, she kind of comes to it and kind of is kind of drawn to it is uh, seduced by it, even though it's like bad. And for me, her journey kind of actually kind of freaked me out this time around, even though this is all in the midst of like, you know, 90s effects and bombastic scores and just beautiful art direction, but very, you know, still kind of like 90s, a lot of, you know, fades on the screen, things like that just affects you like, oh, this is a 90s movie. But then I'm just like this excess, this dread of just like the only thing keeping me from control of myself is just like this or like. You know, I don't know, this power beyond mine that could make me just a, a mindless person who like wants this thing but shouldn't want it. I don't know. It. I think that's for me the essence of this horror romance is like you kind of want you're seduced by it, but you're also horrified by it. And just with the whole kind of the the the, the set design, the characters, and just how they all interact, it's it's scary. And the movie also does some. I think it has a better balance of its kind of cheesier elements that you might see in like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, uh, where like there are funny moments. Anthony Hopkins is, is Van Helsing, and he <laughs> to exa- be an example, like to express what happens to uh, Lucy, Mina's friend, who gets so like she gets the brunt of it, and I feel so bad for her. But it's also the crux of like Dracula has a he can damn people, he can end them, and just out of whim, out, out of passion. But he just like he's as an example, what vampires do, he just runs up to a guy and starts humping him. He's like, she's a bitch of the damned. And he's so ribald and like kind of vulgar as a scientist. And yeah, it's just so rough. Do you feel like you mentioned Lucy? Do you feel like this movie punishes Lucy for being a slut while reward about, while not punished, like not having the same kind of punishment for everyone else for sexual activity? Yes. That's kind of the the basis of Dracula in general. It's the fear of, women losing their virginity and becoming sex monsters. It's, yeah, re- it's representative it's, in the blood and the moment they have sex, then the, suddenly their bosoms are uncontained and just out <laughs> there and pushed up in their flowy clothes. I love that sentence. Their bosoms are uncontained. Their bosoms are uncontained. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time, the well, moment each woman becomes a vampire oh. in this movie, suddenly their boobs are huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't remember yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. oh, it's all over. The, I mean, it's, it's Coppola. Yeah. And I mean... Love is messy, granted. Vampirism is super messy. Mm-hmm. But is it romantic when you like see the object of your desire and you go on a fucking and killing spree and terrorize that woman who's married to someone else? Who doesn't know she's in this who relationship. Who doesn't know she's yeah. in this relationship. <laughs> you fucking and kill her best friend and and all of her friends and her Don't husband. Don't worry, you'll grow to like it. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, and I think that's Shh, why it... Get in the coffin. We're going to be in love. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's where the horror element comes in, as both a horror romance, is that it's horrifying. And there's elements that are horrific in that. And I think that's what really kind of makes this, like, not just be... I th- Without some of these other elements together, all in one whole, I think it would just be like, this is exploitative and awful. And it's like, this is still awful, but... It's the horror part of the romance. So you don't think this movie portrays this as like some kind of true like love across the d- centuries or whatever? I, I think their love across the centuries is true. You, you keep saying their love. It's not their love. It's, it's not, his, it's his love. love. Yeah. She yeah, has, that's what I mean. Do you yeah. feel like the movie presents it in a way that we're supposed to feel like they're in no, love? Or no, you movie... get that. You get that Dracula loves her. She has no fucking clue who he yeah, is, yeah. and whenever she like, whenever he wants her to, he makes her. He's an but, impassioned sociopathic yeah, monster. Like the whole like, see me, and then she has no choice but then to see him. Like it, it's mm-hmm. all very controlled. Like th- this is not romantic or love. This is a guy being a predator. Mm-hmm. Like he is a monster who is hunting someone. Like that is the nature of the character. 
So mm-hmm. it might have been a romance back in the day. That you're very, you're absolutely right. They were definitely well. In the love, novel but, was a series of letters written by Jonathan Harker, wasn't yeah. it? So it and, probably and, wouldn't have seemed romantic. Exa- I, I never yeah. finished reading it, but uh, like, it's a great book. Yeah. Um, but it, it's yeah, it just it never felt romantic to me. It felt like that like it's a classic and it's a very w- well told story and it's a very tragic story. But that doesn't mean that sh- like because the romance for me would be them in love and they're not. Like the the love story is between Kanu Reeves and uh, and Winona Ryder, and they don't really spend any time in that. So mm-hmm. instead, you get Gary Oldman hunting Winona Ryder, yeah. and, and that's when, not romantic. Once she's kind of in love with him, once he starts feeding on her, is when she starts to go to sexy town, and then she becomes terrifying because she's sexually aroused for the rest of the movie. Essentially, she looks like she's stuck in a constant. Uh, state of arousal and, and her bosoms are uncontained her bosoms, <laughs> bosoms are uncontained <laughs> and uh Keanu Reeves character is just like no stop it and like trying to hold her down well and let's not forget that Dracul before he even becomes a vampire is also on killing sprees yeah. in the name yeah. of the church which is questionable in itself he hoists and, people on batards and shit it's yeah. gross and leaves <laughs> yeah. his lover Elisabetta leaves his lover at home alone to hang out and kill herself while he's on a killing spree for the church. That's not that's not a good partnership. That's not <laughs> that's not romance. That's not what you put on like Tinder dates. <laughs> I yeah, will yeah. leave you to go on a killing spree. I, mean, I am in love romantically with killing people. <laughs> that's that's what my profile says. It might be why I've never been on a Tinder date. <laughs> you might find one. Stay away from that yeah, one. Stay away from that one. <laughs> I think uh, for that the end when she finally kills him and closes the loop as it were. <laughs> Um, I think no, that we're watching Looper. <laughs> <laughs> I think that saves that for me, and that, that's why like the, all the problems that you mentioned in the middle, like, kind of have context for me and make sense. Is in that moment she does see kind of the full like because of the, she does see the fullness of like she know she kind of sees uh, Elizabetta and all that and kind of sees that a relationship there and i think i think she just sees his point of view like you can like she has empathy for where he's coming from that doesn't mean that she reciprocates yeah recognizing the motives of a serial killer and and loving and having a romance with that serial killer are different uh, hannibal <laughs> the tv show killing with romance i'm saying like there, there's that sense of like it's a weird complicated relationship with awful people and i think that she by, but by she her wasn't empathy, awful <laughs> She, she didn't start out awful. She became, she, yeah. He made her awful. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about how interesting a choice the Red Dragon would have been for this, for this yeah. thing. <laughs> I just want to go on for Manhunter. Uh, yeah, that too. I've never seen Manhunter. It's really fantastic. Good. No, it's really good. It's weird watching uh, Sansa Lane, or fuck's his name, Hannibal, Hannibal. Lecter without... Brian Anthony. Cox. Yeah. yeah. Or Anthony Hopkins. Without Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. It's weird watching the first person's take. Yeah, that's, I, I like think that's Brian Cox I doing it. He's less yeah. like, he eats less scenery when yeah, he's doing it. I thought it. he did a really good job. Yeah. I don't like he eats Mendes more so people and less scenery. <laughs> so it's last but not least. Right. Yeah, go Are for it. Are you thirsty for victory, Brian? Uh, uh, you... I'm going to do what I can. Okay. So the problem with thirst, I'm going to get it right out of the <laughs> way. It's a very tragic romance. Like this is a movie when you're watching it, it it's not very romantic. Like the 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 crux of it is that these two are terrible for each other. So that's just on its sleeve in the beginning. The thing that works about it and why I still think it's a romantic movie is because it is all a victim of circumstance. So these two people do horrible things to each other the whole way through the movie. Like they are poison for each other. But it is they they make it clear throughout the movie that if they had met in a different circumstance they would have been perfect. Like they bring out both the best and the worst in each other. And that's important as I go through what's about to happen in this movie. Uh, <laughs> you need to remember that or it's going to sound real bad. <laughs> um, so the thirst is about a priest who wants to help people. And to do that, he goes to Africa where there's this horrible plague that only affects men, but he wants to help people. So he goes, he gets the plague. He dies. They give him a blood transfusion. Whoops, vampire blood. And now he's a vampire. So he comes back to where he's from and everyone thinks that he is like a god because he's the only person who survived this plague. And through this, he basically finds somebody who has cancer. They ask him to pray for him. He says yes. They invite him over to dinner. While at dinner, he meets that guy's wife. This girl was brought up in this house, was abused. They didn't like her any. Like She had to share the, the mom's bed. And then when it got time for her to be married, she's like, well, just go sleep in my son's bedroom. And so she's forced to go over there. So she's horribly unhappy and forced to marry this guy. 
The priest just wanted to help people. The only way that he knew how to do it was to become a priest. He doesn't want to be a priest, but that's the only way to to help people. So they're both in these situations they don't want to be in. So the priest doesn't want to hurt anybody, which is very problematic for a vampire. So the way that he does it is he goes to people getting blood transfusions, takes the blood, drinks it, and then puts it back in. So they don't become a vampire. He still gets to be alive. Uh, If he does not drink that blood, the plague comes back and he dies. So he constantly has to drink blood or he will die. Kind of like a vampire, but a little bit worse because he's not just going to starve to death. He's going to die of a plague. Um, Through many circumstances, the girl who does not want to be married to this guy convinces the priest that her husband is beating her. So he goes, all right, well, fuck that guy. I'm a vampire. I need blood. I'm going to kill him. So he kills her husband and now they are together. He then finds out that she convinced him to kill somebody who was technically innocent. He doesn't take that very well. There's a lot of violence, uh, lots of problems. But eventually he con- converts her into being a vampire. And you have these wonderful moments where like things are actually okay for a little bit. And like you can see what the relationship could have been. And it's just touching and it's sweet. And she's like, can we jump off this building? He's like, yeah, we can jump off this building. They jump off the building together and she's laughing and having a great time. It's like, oh, this could have been so good. But you're dumb, and they start killing all of their friends, and they paint their entire apartment white so it looks cooler when blood gets splattered everywhere because they get into that. And it just kind of gets worse and worse and worse, and you realize that as well as they can bring out the best in each other, they can bring out the worst. And the worse it gets, it's just a snowball. And they start killing more people, and the priest has a problem with that because he never actually wanted to hurt anybody. He just wanted to be a good person, and she just wanted to be free. And now that she's not only free, she's free with superpowers and doesn't care about humanity anymore. She just goes way off the rails and starts like standing in the highway to get hit by cars so that when they come out to go, oh my God, are you okay? She goes, yeah, I'm okay. How about I just drink all your blood? And she murders the fuck out of more people and it just goes crazier and crazier and crazier till eventually he's like, nope, this is wrong. We're not doing this right. I'm going to kill us both. And he takes her to a cliff at sunrise and he basically like, He's like, this is what we're doing. And she tries everything she can to try to like hide in the trunk. He throws the trunk into the ocean. She tries to hide it on the car. He pushes the car away. He's like, nope, this is what we're doing. And instead of running away or fighting him, she realizes what he's doing is right, even though she doesn't want to die. And they hold each other and they wait for the sun to rise and they both burn. And it's like, it's just tragic. And, like, and it's just sad and it's heartbreaking And it's more heartbreaking because we got that one scene where they were so good together. And it's like, fuck, man. Stupid vampires ruin everything. (laughs) Um, That's all I have. I feel like that was my pitch. I'm going to stop a little early. We got 30 seconds left. Is it scary? Yeah, it's really fucking creepy. The whole (laughs) movie is just, it just has this like, it's not that it's scary like like a Wes Craven or like something like that. Is there dread? Yeah, you just have this like uncomfortable like horror element to it where everything you're seeing feels off and it's gross and it's bloody. Whenever they get the plague, they these gross boils all over them. Like it's just it's it's unnerving. Like so it's not like a horror classic horror where like you're gonna go to bed and have nightmares, but it's like it makes you on edge the whole time you're watching it. No matter what the scene is. The whole thing is just kinda ha. Huh. And there's lots of ghosts. After they kill the guy, he shows up and haunts him a lot. What? There's ghosts too? There's ghosts well, they, too. They constantly see her dead husband like in the room with them. Like They're Ugh. trying to have sex at one point, Ugh. and he's in between them just smiling. Like, this is dread. weird. <laughs> uh, so, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's visually like, ah. If she's wanting freedom, uh, and then he converts her into a vampire, isn't he just kind of giving her a new prison? Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the problem, is that she doesn't... All she knows is she doesn't want to be in that house anymore, and she wants to be a vampire. She wants to be a vampire. Wait, he but doesn't want to turn. Why does she want to be a vampire? Because she could get freedom in a wide variety of ways without becoming a vampire. They make it pretty clear in the beginning that because of her upbringing and where she's from, that she really only has the option of staying in this family. She has nothing. Like she's very stuck in this family. Like she's supposed to take over the shop when the mom dies. Like she can't get out. It's one of those uh, economical. I'm stuck here situations. And then after becoming a vampire, is it necessary for her to have killed her innocent former husband? She could have just left, right? Oh, she could have. She won't. Wait, so he turns her into a vampire before he kills her? No, no, no. He kills the husband and then then she turns into a vampire. Okay. But he could have just turned her into a vampire and they could have left and gone drinking transfusion blood, right? They could have, but she doesn't want to drink transfusion blood. She wants to drink... Because she's a horrible person. Because she goes nuts. (laughs) And you can have like a sweet, awesome, sexy night with somebody... 
But that doesn't mean that like you're made for each other forever. It sounds like they're definitely not made for each other in any way, except for having a hot one night stand. It's not even a hot one night. It's not sexy. Like the the all the sex happens before they turn into vampires. Like all like that, like that romance, like that sort of stuff. All right, a hot, so they're not a hot, fucking on top of body bodies in no. like a pool a of hot blood. No. One night adventure of it, it's, vampire skills. It's adorable. Like <laughs> <laughs> An adorable one night adventure. Yeah. Like he sounds like he's like truck stuck in like the weirdest I'm a nice guy thing ever. Where he's like always making me like I'm a nice guy. I make these terrible decisions, but I'm a nice guy. Yeah. He is a nice guy. <laughs> on, a, on a random side note, when you're giving someone blood transfusion, shouldn't you, like, the way you would test for AIDS, shouldn't you test for vampire blood before accidentally You trans- should go to a hospital and ask that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you test for vampire? Do you for test vampi- for vampire? Like, do you, like, hold it in the sun for, like, one second? Blood. If it lights on fire, like, oh, I'm not giving that one. I mean, it <laughs> seems perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Next time I go in to give blood, I'm going to I'm gonna be like, are you guys going to test for, uh, for vampire? Test <laughs> for, yeah, please. Uh, it is October. This is, this right. is kind of on the rise. <laughs> I've said my piece. You guys are supposed to be criticizing this movie. Yeah, it's a tough movie to criticize because it's fucking awesome. It's also the scariest one on the table. Yeah, it is. Um, it's done by the same guy who did Old Boy and Lady Vengeance and uh, oh, Stoker. Oh shit! And, yeah, but it isn't. Isn't it He's so amazing. much horror and, and not enough romance? Because That's, there's um, that like Chang. I don't. The, yes. rom- yeah. the romance is tough in the movie. It's very it is. true. It, it, it's it's a about tough... a man and a woman, but. Yeah, but, but that the, doesn't mean they're in love. Oh, they're definitely in love. They, I mean, at least they say it all the time. But like, they, mm-hmm. you can tell that they, because otherwise she'd leave or he'd leave her. Like they, they make it very clear. Like they want each other in their lives, but they can't figure out how to do it. And that's why I say it's tragic. Like because clearly, like they, they want each other. They really want it. And one night they get it to work. And is it? lust based love or is there in the beginning yes in the beginning it's because he's a priest he's never slept with anyone before like he even has the line i've never kissed anyone before until now and he goes for it yeah you Uh, can't just stay with your first kiss forever i mean rarely yeah but he's a nice guy who also rescinds his vows of celibacy oh yeah but like i said he didn't want to be a priest like it was the best way he could try to figure out to help people she didn't want to be a captive in this house but that's how it ended up it's a really tragic of circumstance if other circumstances happened i don't think it would have gone as violently that could be the hopeless romantic in me but i don't think it would have if they'd met otherwise i wonder what their painting bill was though if they had to keep repainting their walls white every time they killed somebody i mean they really only go on one super killing spree where the walls and i mean does being madly in love mean destroying everyone around you all your friends i mean if it's a toxic relationship (laughs) yes because if it's a toxic relationship you don't actually like hanging out with them anymore I mean, that's the sort of wedding I would not want to attend. We were, we were <laughs> talking about weddings earlier and how hard it is to it's get an open like, vein wedding. Get, yeah, get we're all your friends. We're saving a lot of money on our vendors by not hiring our caterer. We're just going to eat you. Yeah. We're just like, gonna, yeah. Why is there no food at this wedding? Oh. oh. <laughs> Why'd you, oh, fuck. I'm food, aren't I? Oh, no. Should have had the open we- oh, outside wedding. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh. Can I hear everybody give me like one sentence about why your movie is the best? Consent. <laughs> One word. One Just word. An uncommon. <laughs> One word. Consent. <laughs> Mine is about the passion of youth, and how it can also be misguided. Faded love, perverted. These are not sentences. You guys are, are not doing words. sentences. Yeah. It's poetic. Uh, my movie is the best because it depicts tragic romance, the best. <laughs> got best twice in one sentence all right trump whoa 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 i didn't whoa. say it was bigly <laughs> the big ocean the big water mine should win otherwise i'll be sad the fangs are, <laughs> the fangs are bigly <laughs> all right it sounds okay so i'm gonna whittle it down here because um Frankenstein sounds like its really re- redeeming quality is that Kenneth Branagh's hot. <laughs> and he's grand. There's the grandiose of my movie. Like That's where it's about the 
the passion of youth because it was about a man who was misguided in his youth with his passions. And just the way Kenneth Branagh directed it was and him being a little... he wants to bang his sister. Don't forget about that. Right, right. <laughs> Don't forget about thing, that. Yeah. And the way the movie's presented is so young Kenneth Branagh. would be like, I am just amazing. And then he made some mistakes that yeah, the movie should really... could have been better. But... I'd love to ask Kenneth Branagh who's the coolest person in the world. Because if he doesn't say Kenneth Branagh, I am disappointed. <laughs> 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 he tilts his head off to the, like a canted angle and be like, me. I uh, hope he still Kenneth has his... Brana? His mustache from Orient Express and goes yeah. Kenneth Branagh. And strokes it. I can imagine when he was married to Emma Thompson, just the the constant drama that must have just oh, gone on in that. He house. has to be the biggest pain in the ass. You didn't do the dishes today. <laughs> I wanted pancakes. But then her too, man. Oh, totally. <laughs> it's like fuck your pancakes. <laughs> That'd be right. they'd be the best. Actually, movies. I want that movie. Someone make that movie. <laughs> yeah. You All think right. it was just like Understand a Beatrice and Benedict movie, okay. continuation? Before I just win, because that's what we want to talk about. Blah. Uh, yeah. It's not, <laughs> I don't think Frankenstein's winning. Um, no, I know Frankenstein's not winning. Oh, um, sorry. Um, all right. Decree it. Decree it. My, my, oh, yeah. Okay. It's it. No Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need, we need to get a block of wood for that thing to hit. Yeah, right. Oh, there's a little, I don't know if you can tap on that box Let next to the duct tape. Because yeah, yeah. this is important. Just, just hit I'm the a, microphone. I'm really a percussionist, hard. so I'm always looking around the room oh. for things I can hit. <laughs> Give that a go. I love Buffy so much. And Yay, I Buffy! Do, and I do love, uh, I do love uh, a movie. It's the only movie on the table where a woman is just like, rawr, you know, um, her choice, her choice. Yeah, and uh, but my thing about Buffy is, yeah, it's not, it's not much of a horror movie. Like, there's no dread. It's just fun, and I don't. So I don't. No, I really. Retro's or uh, Hewer's makeup is horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of horrific elements. Neon squiggles, <laughs> <laughs> mall bangs. Hillary Swank talking like a valley girl. Yes. Oh, Hillary Swank's in that movie? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ben Affleck's first role where he hands a ball yeah. to a vampire. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I was like, if I work uh, yeah. with Ben Affleck, I'm going to get him to Stop. We're, we're helping him. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say about Frankenstein. I do give you points for being the only person here who didn't choose a vampire movie. Yeah, yeah that was, yes. yeah. that's true. <laughs> I was between two vampire movies. <laughs> Paul Rubens, a little horrific. Paul Rubens, yeah. dying all day long. <laughs> <laughs> dying all the way honestly it's one of the best death scenes Di- ever. dying all the way through the credits Be- beautiful and horrific simultaneously yeah I just I do love Buffy but I just I do, it's not a it's, it doesn't it's not really a horror movie to me it's more of a comedy with some horror elements so I'm just but I do love Buffy so much and the TV show is one of my favorites but I'm gonna say no to Buffy alright as, as long as I really can't dispute that it's not a horror because yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm too easily scared to watch true horror. I only watch comedy horror. I but thought you said yes to everything. I do. I do say yes to everything. <laughs> she but, says yes, but. I, but. <laughs> but I told you I watch I watch it through my yeah. fingers with my my hands over my eyes. I'm Why like, is the, the cinematography so foggy? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a, what weird choices they're making. Um, as long as we all agree that we love Buffy, we then, love then, Buffy. Buffy. Yeah. then I'm yeah. I'm okay great with that. Movie. All right, it is great. Okay, That's so we it twice. <laughs> I want to do the same thing that that Brian did last time and like put the last two movies against each other directly because Ooh. i i do love dracula mm-hmm. but thirst sounds kind of awesome so um awesome. yeah so i want to hear you guys like <laughs> like take what did you do last time you gave like i said 30 w- seconds to say why the other movie is garbage i like that let's okay. do that Should I set a timer? oh all right dun, dun, dun. Oh, you're asking me i forgot <laughs> uh let's let you go first since you went last before okay. So, 30 seconds on why Dracula sucks. Yeah. Um, I think I already kind of covered it when I was doing the question part of this, but Dracula sucks because it is just such a one-sided romance. Like, it is all about one guy going, oh, girl, and then just pursuing her, like, throwing all caution in the wind, whether or not she's into it, which she's clearly not until he starts, like, playing mind games on her, and then she goes fucking nuts for it. It just, it misses the point of being a romantic horror movie. Because it's just all about what the guy wants. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop our mic. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of expensive. Which you're secured <laughs> on stands. Yeah. Well, there's a reason for that. Otherwise, I'd drop them all the time. <laughs> you have to right. unscrew all of the little yeah. uh, wing nuts. Hang on, I got it. Hold, it's going to be cool. On. Hold on. <laughs> all right. You ready? Yep. I think it's whatever Brian said about mine, but in reverse. Uh, I think sh- she is the Dracul in this, and um, it's very one-sided on hers. And I don't necessarily buy his love for her in that one moment. I think it's 
like just like it's that one flash pan moment that fizzles out in the same way that they burn up at the end. It, it's uh, just kind of the reverse of that for me. Brian is way better at arguing than you are. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't even say mic drop. (laughs) I don't want to drop this mic. I do enjoy Dracula very much. Um, it's it's fun. I feel bad for Lucy. I feel like Lucy got the real like of all the people. She really in that got movie. fucked in like every uh, way possible, like literally, gets, figuratively, and every she other. She did get to look really good in that red dress with her bosoms being she, uncontained. She <laughs> did. Um, big fan of that word bosom. Bosoms, <laughs> uncontained bosoms. Yeah. That's, <laughs> we should, that's we should why start there's a show called band. Bosom Buddies. <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. it's catchy. It'll be a band called the Renfield and the Uncontained Bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just Tom Waits singing. Right? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'll buy eight tickets for that. I frequently wonder whether uh, Tom Waits and Cookie Monster are the same person. <laughs> Why do you want? I think it's pretty much just confirmed, yeah. isn't it? Is it? <laughs> okay. yeah. no idea. Oh, so we need to go <laughs> offer Tom Waits some cookies. Hashtag confirmed. <laughs> So I think in the end, um, Thirst just sounds super cool. It is. It sounds like a movie I'd really like to watch, and it sounds both scary and romantic and creepy, and like it meets the needs of this particular episode. And Boom. so I'm going to say uh, all of these movies sound really good. You all did an awesome job. I'm definitely going to watch Frankenstein so I can watch Hot Kenneth Branagh. I'm going to try to find Buffy again because I forgot how awesome Buffy the yeah. movie you just, is. Really you can just good. borrow our copies of both. Yeah, we, okay. have, we yeah. have both Blu-ray and okay. DVD. I, uh, I've seen Jaggy like a thousand times, yeah. but you know I'd always watch it again because Gary Oldman is fucking awesome. Um, but I'm going to give it to Thirst, you guys. Ooh. So in the beginning when I said it's going to win, I was right. You're yeah. right. <laughs> well, Everyone sounds I so mean, annoyed by I that. Mean, <laughs> I mean, I wish I'm not happy yeah, about it. I, I wish my while, movie so. was scarier. Everyone this knows. was one of those uh, battles where it was like, I actually wanted to like go through and watch every movie as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like that's partially why I'm so tired because it's like I actually made time to yeah. watch these movies. I'm like, fuck, I need to sleep. But these movies. Yeah. But I mean, mine has a Kang Ho song in it and I will watch any movie with it's him in true. it. It's true. He is one of the greatest actors. He is, he's one of the greatest he's actors amazing. working. Too. He's so good. It makes me sad that he can't really speak English because he, oh, he can. Kill- can he? Yeah, he just he's not the best at it, but in the that movie I wanted to go see tomorrow, maybe uh, Taxi Driver, he speaks English. Oh, okay. see, I just kind of yeah. thought that was the only thing holding him back from the American market. I just don't think he wants to be in the American yeah. market. Yeah. Uh. It's up I guess. Don't blame we're him. not the best yeah. to our Asian actors. No, we're not. <laughs> I mean, that's and that's the other thing is I feel like Korean film is just doing things that American films aren't like courageous enough to do in a lot oh, of yeah. cases. They, yeah, they 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 let their characters do really horrific things yeah. that an American uh, filmmaker would be like, whoa, we can't go that far. You know, well, and that's the part. hardest thing to argue, like to even want to argue against thirst, or no, like for for real, you could have just said thirst, and I'd have been like. I'm not arguing against that. See, when I was watching, like, this is gonna be a tough sell as romantic because I think it is, but it's like it's an anti romance. It, it, it is. It's, it's yeah. brutal. It's and brutal, I actually but... haven't watched it because yeah. I I didn't even know it existed until yesterday when I found out it was yeah. one of the other movies. But I read the page and I was like, this sounds awesome and also really gross and not. Yeah, yeah. Really I, I like. I like not really romantic. <laughs> I, I, lo- yeah, I love bleak and uh, tragic. So yes. I had to buy it on Amazon. Yes, okay. and like this sounds like an awesome tragedy horror. Yeah, it, it's bleak as fuck. But I do think the romance is there. Otherwise, I would. I would have. I would have bailed yeah, on it. That's how I lo- love uh, romances. To but yeah, bleak it, and it, tragic. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I love about Korean film, man. I'm not yeah. usually a bleak and tragic person, but I love like I saw the devil is like just fucking dark and in an old boy and all that like everything from. Have that. you seen Handmaiden yet? No, I haven't. That's on Amazon. Fucking yeah. great. Talk about I, it's on romance. my list of things yeah, to watch. That's that's romantic and bleak as hell. Yeah. I just yeah. I want to be surprised by films, so I don't want to see the same thing I've seen a yeah. hundred times. Mm-hmm. And so like that's Korea's good for that. Yeah, <laughs> great. Chaser's another really good one, although there's a bit of you know woman being abused in that, but it's still just a great movie. Um, yeah, and the Good, the Bad, and the Weird, which is one of my favorite movies. Oh, that's well. I love that movie as well. Uh, but we should bring this thing to a close. So that's the end of our romantic horror movie battle. But we have the rest of October planned. Uh, so next week we have Chris Ortiz. Next week in quotations, we're recording it in like 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> we have him coming on for... Uh, Tales- Demon Knight. Demon Tales- Knight. Yeah. Tales from the Crypt, colon, Demon Knight. Yeah, no, IMDb is very quick to correct you. It's like, oh, do yeah. you mean Tales yeah. from the Crypt, Demon Knight? I'm like, just give me the movie. <laughs> just, just put it on. Just and put it I've on. I've never seen Demon Knight. There's a wonderful moment where... I just forgot his name. 
Billy Zane. Billy Zane, Billy Zane. literally has a uh, glowing penis. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, that's it's a fucking kick ass movie that everyone should watch before next week. <laughs> I just remembered that scene. Oh, uh, and then the week after that, we have Mari coming back, friend of the show, who picked one of my all time favorite movies, and I am so excited to talk about it because it's near flawless in American Werewolf in London. Uh, oh yeah. Then the week after that, uh, assuming that we don't have scheduling conflicts with him again, we have uh, what was it called Devil's again? Rejects. Devil's Rejects. And that one should be fun. I've never seen it, and I've heard great and horrible things, so it will be interesting. Uh, unless, of course, we have scheduling conflicts yet again, <laughs> which would be fitting for us, especially when we try to do things this far in advance. So again, Libby, where can people find you? Sneaky Varmint. All over. All over the world. It's Sneaky Varmint. Awesome. That's just cool. such a, <laughs> that's the way you phrase it. All over the world, Sneaky Varmint. <laughs> She's well-traveled. That's awesome. Yeah. And sneaky. Uh, and sneaky. You can find us www.athpod.com where you can find everything that we're doing. And be sure to check out our Spotify playlist. Uh, I honestly think they're getting better every week. They're yeah. a ton of fun, and I yeah. really. Now I'm starting to run an issue since I seem to be the people person with the least uh, music knowledge. I'm like, ah, crap! I have to start listening to more things. I just go down my iTunes week. list. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it works if you're very quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this today, you still have one day to listen to our death playlist, which I thought was fucking awesome, and it gave me a reason to use Death Clock, which I love. Yeah. Uh, I used another Nightwish song. There's always a reason to put a Nightwish. There's always room for Nightwish. That's not true at all. Their songs are ridiculously long. I love uh, them. <laughs> I, I went for a combination of like serious and and silly, and I, I, I'm happy with my choices. Well done. All right, we're done. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.